Deepak Chopra is a man that Time magazine ranked among the 100 most important personalities of the 20th century. He's the author of approximately 80 books, many of which are international bestsellers. Deepak Chopra is a medical doctor who studied endocrinology and Indian Ayurveda. He's very much interested in how spiritual and mental perceptions turn into chemicals and electricity in our body and vice versa. This, of course, is contested by his opponents. I met Mr. Chopra in Prague, where he came to give a talk at the Once in a Lifetime conference and lead a full day a workshop at the Evolution Festival. He found a space in his busy schedule for our debate. So get ready, this is where we start with instructions for a happy and successful life according to Deepak Chopra. Do you sometimes feel necessity of anybody's help just to go to anybody? So who is asking for spiritual help, the spiritual leader? At this moment, no. I don't need help. At this moment, I, I use... Uh, my silence. Okay, so you are balanced and in peace. Yes. With the universe. Yes. That's great. That's yes. great. This is another reason why the people are looking for meeting with you and for the help. Oh, yeah. Please, uh, during your lecture, you said that uh, the life and existence is timeless. Uh, well, I will play a little bit game about just moving in time. If we move maybe to 1951, we will be in New Delhi. There will be four or five years old boy. His father is cardiologist, very important cardiologist. And the boy is called Deepak Chopra. Mm -hmm. Tell me something, please, about that boy. How is he spending time? Uh, what are friends around him? Uh, going to school, a lot of friends, different uh, religions. Catholics, Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, um, Parsis, very eclectic. Uh, going to theater, going to music festivals, going to poetry sessions, <clears throat> traveling all over the uh -huh. country. Uh -huh. His father? With father and mother, yes, and younger brother. Yeah, and thinking about to be once as a father, to be a doctor as well? To mostly thinking about adventure. Mostly about adventure. Mm -hmm. When start your interest in endocrinology and about thinking how the emotions are changing to physical or chemical processes in our body? Much later, I went to medical school in India. <clears throat> I left India when I was 23. Mm -hmm. And then I trained in medicine, internal medicine then endocrinology, then neuroendocrinology, and slowly into consciousness. I thought maybe that there should be some story behind, some very strong story, very good or very bad, which moved you and you said, well, how it happened? How it happened in me? And that's why you started. Like in that. hindsight, yes. You know, when I was in medical school, we had some American visitors, medical students, we experimented with LSD. <clears throat> ah, okay. So that was <clears throat> a brief encounter with consciousness. Mm -hmm. But then I forgot about it. Okay, then uh, went to the United States. It was much later when I was actually seeing patients mm -hmm. and also working in the lab and seeing the connection between brain chemistry, emotions, and consciousness. Mm -hmm. You say the word consciousness. This mm -hmm. is a very important word in all your, yes. all your life, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell me, uh, please, something to me and the viewers, something about consciousness. Is it, are you really sure that it can cure people? It can cure people of suffering, misery, yes. Can it move people to fulfill their dreams? Yes, because consciousness is the basis of all creativity. Consciousness is the basis of intuition. Consciousness is the basis of imagination. Consciousness is what constructs experience. So all experience, mental, perceptual, imaginary, is conceived in consciousness. It's constructed in consciousness. 
in the deeper reality, there's only consciousness having an experience. Then the rest is a story, whether it's a mythological story, theological story, scientific story, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The fundamental reality in the world, in the universe, is consciousness having an experience. And it's you and I having a human experience right now. But consciousness has other experience. Dolphin experience, mm -hmm. insect experience. Mm -hmm. So there's no such thing as a world. What we call the world is a human experience in consciousness. What does the world look like to a snake that only senses infrared? What does the world look like to an insect with 10 eyes? What does the world look like to a bat that moves through the echo of ultrasound? What does the world look like to a honeybee that only senses ultraviolet? You see, what we call everyday reality is a species-specific experience in consciousness. There is universal consciousness, and part of it is now using the matter of my body. It's more than that. Just keep it simple. What is this? Mm -hmm. What is it? Uh, this is, well, I say it's book. Yeah. Your book. Yeah, but actually, if I showed this to a baby, no idea of a book, right? It's mm -hmm. a color. It's a mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah, smell. Try to chew it, maybe. Try to chew it. Yeah. So that is consciousness having an experience. Mm -hmm. The rest is a human story. That is very fundamental, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's a human experience. It does. It's not an experience of another species. Yeah, it's nothing objective. It's only a kind of rules, before you rules, call rules. something an object. It's uh -huh. an experience. All right. And raw experience is just consciousness modifying itself mm -hmm. as color, sound, taste, smell. Okay. The rest is a human construct. Even your body, what you call my body, it's a shape, it's a color, it's a form, it's a sound, <laughs> it's a smell. The rest is a story because there's no body. Your body is changing all the time. I think that I understand that now in all your books, you try to help people use the consciousness, use it properly, Yes. not misuse it, to recognize it inside us. Yeah, well, actually, it's the only thing you have. Mm -hmm. The rest is a modified form of consciousness. So what we call matter, energy, information, space-time, mm -hmm. these are human constructs for modes of knowing and experience in human consciousness. Even the time? Even time, because the only time is now. The rest is in the imagination. I am recognizing many similarities in Asia philosophy, in Indian philosophy. Uh, how does it work in the Western world? Well, you are popular, you are famous, people yeah, are no, looking no, for you. No, no, it's but Indian philosophy, it but comes it, together. this is what uh, Wittgenstein said, this is what Heidegger said, this mm -hmm. is what Immanuel Kant said, mm -hmm. this is what Plato said. It's not only Eastern. If you look at all the great thinkers mm -hmm. in the West, mm -hmm. And all the scientists, including Schrodinger and Wolfgang and Pauli, they said consciousness is fundamental. Mm -hmm. Everything else is a creation of consciousness. Deepak Chopra's clients included Michael Jackson, Elizabeth Taylor, Hillary Clinton, and many others. He's cooperated with Winnie Oprah, Leonardo DiCaprio, and a number of medical and genetics experts. He invests the millions of dollars that his work generates back into his research. He supports many of his theories with clear data. We may wonder about his philosophy, which for many is surprising and even controversial, but I'm convinced that it makes sense to let ourselves be enriched with a new philosophical view, all the more when it's based on harmony and understanding of oneself and others. So now we are quite deep, and I will try just to jump up to the surface. I will tell you the thing we used to call a book. And this is your book, Czech Translation of Spiritual Leadership. Uh, it has been uh, chosen by uh, Time magazine, I guess, of New York Times, as uh, one of the five most important books for um, managers, for people who want to fulfill Wall Street, their career. Yeah, Wall Street Journal. A while ago, yeah. So, uh, can you tell me one sentence or one uh, information that just to build the bridge? Yeah, so between instead of calling it spiritual and... leadership, we yes. call it conscious leadership. Mm -hmm. That's all. So, conscious leaders are those who are very aware mm -hmm. of experience. They're also aware of what is happening around them. They're good observers. 
they feel what they're observing. Mm-hmm. They ask questions, what is needed? And then they answer the question, how can I fulfill this need? So we have humans have needs. Survival, safety, love, team building, entrepreneurship, creativity, higher consciousness, vision. You can start with small me, family, friends, society, and the whole world ultimately, and even beyond that. So the first principle in conscious leadership is look and listen. Mm -hmm. The second principle is understand emotions because nobody acts rationally. There's no one in the world who acts rationally. I agree. Okay. My experience is it's totally I'm emotional. Sure. So understand emotional and social intelligence. Number three, expand your awareness. Don't be hypnotized by the culture because the culture is constantly recycling the old stuff. Mm-hmm. Very few. Today we say disruptive, right? So mm-hmm. disruptive means somebody who has broken out of the hypnotism of cultural conditioning. So expand your awareness. Understand mechanics of intuition, creativity, imagination. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then uh, dare to dream and make the dream manifest as this. Recognize this is also a dream, but you are the dreamer. Okay, and then Uh take responsibility for your physical, emotional, spiritual well-being and then understand something, concept, which most people know but don't talk about it is understand the mechanics of what they call good luck. Mm-hmm. Okay, everybody says, if you say, how did you become successful? They'll mm-hmm. give you all kinds of excuses, mm-hmm. but then they'll also say, I was lucky. Yeah. Okay, because being in the right place at the right time, mm-hmm. opportunity and preparedness coming together, we call it luck. Mm-hmm. And religious people say, God, doesn't matter what you say. That's another human construct. But to be aware creates what we call synchronicity. So mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. discuss in the book, uh, the great leaders who harness synchronicity. doesn't matter whether it was Mahatma Gandhi or Nelson Mandela mm-hmm. or Martin Luther King Jr. or Abraham Lincoln. These visionary leaders, they used crisis for opportunity. Mm-hmm. No matter how bad the crisis was. They can see it. They can see it. They recognize it. Yeah. They see what is that. They, they don't even use the word crisis. It's an opportunity. Okay. Another book. Very important book, Seven Spiritual uh, Rules of Success. Please say a few words uh, for viewers, because every well, so many people want to get success or fulfill some uh, plans. And First, dreams. you have to define success. What is success? Okay, success is the progressive realization of goals. Mm-hmm. Number one, progressive realization of worthy goals. Okay. Success is also the ability to have love and compassion. Mm-hmm. Success is also having good health, because if mm-hmm. you don't have good health, you're what's the use? Success is ultimately understanding consciousness and how consciousness creates the everyday world. Mm-hmm. So I have seven rules. First is infinite possibilities, is the nature of consciousness. Then consciousness moves through giving and receiving. Mm-hmm. Then consciousness moves through the choices you make, which mm-hmm. we call karma. Converse, uh, consciousness moves through intention. What is the mechanics of intention? Consciousness doesn't use effort. Right now your body is functioning by itself. Mm-hmm. We don't do anything. So law of least effort. So I have seven blues. Pure potentiality, giving and receiving, karma, uh, least effort, intention, desire, detachment, and purpose. Very simple. This is how consciousness, which is unmanifest. Consciousness doesn't look like anything, mm-hmm. okay? It's only the potential for everything. How it becomes what we call from potential to actual. My respondent today is the author of 85 books, 25 of which are New York Times bestsellers. They've been published in 43 languages. The range of themes is enormous. The books deal with philosophy, treatment, a healthy diet, the search for happiness, and even managerial literature. The World Post and the Huffington Post ranked him the 17th most influential thinker in the world and number one in the field of medicine. I will 
keep for a little while in the construct of our brains or of our interpretations. Sure. So these are the things that you have been talking about, for example, with Michael Jackson. For 20 years you have been meeting or you, are, you have been oh, friends. Older, yeah. So these have been uh, topics of your discussions? Yeah, but it evolves, it evolves. I, I, I personally think that he has been a very tiny, very subtle, very fragile person. Yeah. I, I, I think. Yeah. So I think for him must, and on the other hand, he has had absolutely clear vision. He knows yeah. where he goes, I think, or what I have seen or read about him. So uh, I have been every time thinking, well, with whom is he discussing it? With whom is he talking about it? These have been the topics, some of the topics. Yeah, no, Michael was very interested in consciousness and all these ideas. He was very delicate, very fragile. But, you know, this is a strange company we keep with sages, psychotics, geniuses. Mm -hmm. You have to be outside the box. Yes. To at least try and figure out what is reality. When he died, you said that probably now is the moment to move the people at the doctors to stop subscribe so many chemicals yeah, and drugs. Yeah, but it's still happening. Doctors are still there. Basically, they, you know, a lot, at least in Hollywood, there's a, there's a cabal of doctors who are drug mm -hmm. peddlers. They're like drug mm -hmm. agents, you know, very sad. But that's, we call them concierge doctors. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like very much these books because it's very similar to my experiences with uh, some remote tribes which I'm meeting around the world when I'm Correct. filming. Correct. And one tribe in Amazonia has the rule uh, that when the boy becomes to be man or when the time comes, he has to accept responsibility for all the world. That's beautiful. So the boy in a forest is responsible for skyscrapers in New York. It's That's beautiful. for all the world. And now the cosmos. Yes, and uh, I immediately it starts to light up in my head. <laughs> in my brain, or my consciousness. When you start to talk about consciousness, when I first time uh, heard you just uh, talking about it, I said, well, uh, it's very similar. Because yeah. if the consciousness is universal... People who are close to nature, they have this experience. They have deep, deeper knowledge, what we call deep reality. Now we are sitting in a very modern house in the center of Prague. For us, it's quite a big city. Uh, how receive this experience in Prague? You have to go back to your source through reflection, through meditation, through transcendence, through stillness. So uh, start meditate, start to talk with myself, to recognize myself. And recognize you have to start with basic reflection. Who mm -hmm. am I? Well, it's a beyond this, question. The, this, beyond this name and this form, okay. who are you? Wow. What do you want? What is your purpose? We start with that, and then you go deeper, deeper, beyond your mind. And I will be afraid of some my friends' psychical health. Yeah. Then, yeah, it's possible. So it's, it's difficult to way to go. You have to down. have the courage, mm -hmm. because one day you'll die. This body will die. Yes, that's right. Right? So, yeah, any time maybe. Yeah, any time. And the body you had as a child is already dead. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So you have to understand this I in which mm -hmm. the body is an experience. And well, uh, another point which now we touch, this is just to meet our death and just count it. This is part of me, my death. Death is Life creativity. Is mm -hmm. Death is creativity. Death is creativity. Yeah. An old idea has to die for a new idea to be born. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I, now I have. Okay, so death and resurrection go together. Mm -hmm. That's the true meaning of the word resurrection. It's creativity. You discard old concepts, old meaning, old relationship, old story. You create new context, new meaning, new relationship, new story. So the old has to die. Mm -hmm. There has to be incubation. And that has to then emerge into something new. This is all creative process. For there's an intended vision, there's information gathering, there's information analysis, there's death, which we call incubation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's insight, there's then intuition, there's imagination, there's vision, there's inspiration, there's integration, there's manifestation. And then the piece is here. 
Yeah, but it's happening all the time, death and the, resurrection. The piece you mentioned in the beginning of the yes. interview. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.